Morning, everyone. <laughs> uh, I'm actually thrilled to be here. Um, I'll let you in on a secret. I probably use the word thrilled because I was trying to sound more adult than I actually am. Pump's probably a better word. Pump to be here in the house of God this morning. Um, and actually, Beth was doing a survey this week, I think, and I'll have everyone know I was too young to participate. <laughs> too young. Uh, for those of you joining us online, it's great to have you with us this morning. My name's Kyle and I'm part of the awesome team at All Saints here. Um, it may sound like I'm calling myself awesome and I am awesome, but I was actually referring to the team here and that includes every one of you good looking people in the crowd in front of me today. God has provoked me with a message for you this morning. And you may or may not be aware, but today's Trinity Sunday. God is an exciting mystery, a bit like the Trinity, some people might say, but I'm not going there this morning. The Trinity might sometimes be a little bit beyond our ability to comprehend, but this is only because human nature tells us we need to rationalise everything in our human way. And not one metaphor can perfectly enlighten us on what the Trinity is about. We heard Jesus this morning in our reading saying heavenly things versus earthly things. Hot tip, we can't rationalise it and we need to stop trying. It's okay though, because God is exciting, he is wondrous and God is bigger than all of us. Amen? Amen. So I was on a plane earlier this week, which is an unusual experience for a lot of us these days, um, and it reminded me of a story I once heard about the Trinity being compared to an egg, described like an egg, a shell and a yolk. I'm sure people have probably heard that. One egg, three in one, one in three. Um, but then I got to thinking as I do, because I'm sitting there, you know, you've got Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Well, what if I chuck the egg out of the plane? What would happen to the egg? It would break, right? But if I apply the same logic to the Trinity, what would happen there? You get the drift of what I'm saying. For everything rational, there is an irrational, and sometimes we just cannot understand. It's interesting to me, as I don't understand why everyone tries to rationalise everything into some kind of conceivable concept. It's simple. What matters not is that we have questions, we're allowed to question things, but is that we can still believe and trust in his revelation through the Bible and through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. And what's crystal clear to me is we all belong to God and God has got a call on each and every one of our lives and loves us all. And the Bible tells us in John 3, for God so loved the world, that includes all of us, he gave his only son, whoever believes in him should not perish and will have eternal life. God loves you all just as you are. Amen? God's put some things on my heart this morning that I'd love to share with you all. And the first is we need to stop sometimes. You already heard this morning, the wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. We cannot see, control, fully understand wind, but we can see how it bends the branches of a tree. It is the same with God's Spirit. It's invisible, mysterious, and beyond our control, but it is discernible by the effects and actions that it has in every one of our lives. Many things are in our control, the things we do and the way we act. And I'm here to tell you, sometimes we need to stop those things. We need to stop the negativity, stop the hatred, stop the moaning, destructive behaviour. All of these things are Satan's way of turning us against each other. And the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians, no wonder for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Get out of toxic situations, distance yourself from people, there are people who will come and go in your life who will claim to be your friends, but they engage in deceitful behaviour, feed hatred, and ultimately undermine your belief. And I'm telling you today, as hard as it is, sometimes you need to reevaluate some of these friendships. It's hard, I get it, I've done it, it's uncomfortable. 
but each of us probably know who some of these people are that are in our lives. And it takes an enormous amount of courage to act. Joshua 1, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed. And why? What do you get? For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Bring yourself back to centre, back to even keel. The Bible tells us in Psalm 24, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. We need to stop sometimes surrounding us with people who bring us down. If you struggle with this, come and see us. We'll connect you to a home group, a study group, a Bible group, and surround yourself with people who will lift you up in Christ, not bring you down. And they will help you achieve your full potential. The second thing I wanted to share with you this morning is sometimes we need to listen and we need to listen to God. And in our reading this morning, we're hearing about this character, Nicodemus. Now, Nicodemus is a Pharisee. Most of you probably know what that is, but he's a superior man of Jewish faith, a teacher, a leader, an elder. So here we've got this guy who shows up to have a yarn to Jesus in the middle of the night, which is probably a bit sus. I think we can take him, though, to represent a generalised dialogue. And it's representative of the point when Jesus says to him in the conversation, as you heard, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. What's Nicodemus say? How can you be born if you've already been born and grown old? I'm not sure he's really got the down low of what's going on in his conversation. Here's a guy chatting to Jesus, sitting there thinking, what is this Jesus guy going on about today? Do you know what I mean? I'm sure we've all done it. This got me to reflecting. God is often telling us what to do in our lives or talking to us, and sometimes we're not listening. Or perhaps we don't want to hear what he has to say to us because it makes us uncomfortable. Sometimes it's hard to listen to what God wants of us as it might not be what we want of ourselves in our rationalised human thinking. But in John 10, the Bible tells us, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Comprehending God is the problem that Nicodemus had to some extent. And often we cannot understand why God is telling us to do something. So we struggle to comprehend this. And I want you just to remember that doesn't mean that it's the wrong thing to do, if you're feeling that way sometimes. As humans, we have a tendency, as I said, to rationalise. And it doesn't really matter what you think your plans are for your life. God's already got a plan for you. You were born with a plan. In Jeremiah 29, for surely I know the plans I have for you says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm to give you a future of hope. I see you all. You're like, Kyle, how can I listen to God? Well, I am glad you asked. Sometimes I think we need to differentiate what we are hearing. Are you hearing yourself? These are going to sound rational, analytical, very logical. You've, you've sat there and thought, oh, yeah, you're right, Kyle. You know what you're talking about. It might sound like in church, oh, it's okay, if they need me to do something, they'll ask me. Or are you hearing Satan? He condemns. His purpose is to steal, kill and destroy. So if you're hearing negative thoughts, destructive, vicious, accusing, it is the enemy. And it might go a little like, it's okay. They don't need me to do anything in this place. They don't need my help. They wouldn't want you anyway. Or are you hearing God? When God speaks, it always lines up with the Bible. Always. His character and his actions, he is kind, loving, inspirational, wise, healing and convicting without being condemning. And it might go a little bit like, funnily enough, what the Bible tells us in 1 Peter. As each of you has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Amen? Amen. The final point I've got this morning 
is the conversation with Nicodemus was happening at night, if you picked that up, you probably did. For all his qualifications, this character didn't really seem to have much of an idea what the conversation was about. But I just want you to remember, as Isaiah 9 tells us, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. So if we're thinking about the darkness and the light, let's just remember what the Bible talks about. The third point I've got this morning is we need to act. And Jesus knows each and every one of you. As you know, we heard about Nicodemus. There's a significant point here because Nicodemus is one person in the gospel who's named. Yet there are so many other unnamed people in John's gospel that Jesus has encounters with. There's a woman in the well in chapter 4, the crippled man. But I want you to remember God is clear on who you are and what he is calling you to be. But I also want to challenge you this morning. Are you hearing that call or are you open to hear that call? Because God has got a call just for you. And make no mistake, he will pursue you. It's a bit like you can run, but you can't hide. He will never give up. You can't ignore it. It's a bit like the girl or boy you didn't really like in school that kept chasing after you. <laughs> Sadly, I did not have that problem. <laughs> Responding to God's call will almost always, in fact, it will always mean going outside your comfort zone in one way or another. And it means being a little less concerned with yourself and more concerned with God. And the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy, people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy. I'm gonna stop there, but you get the picture. It goes on. These are not the things any of us want to be. And I personally, and I'm sure we all would be lying if we said maybe we aren't some of them things. I'm not saying we're all of them, but from time to time we are some of those things. And I'm not accusing anyone of being those things, just for clarity. But I would be lying if I said I wasn't. And, you know, Pastor Kesh was telling us last week about coming to church in a bad mood. Um, do you want to be that person that comes to this place in a bad mood? I've been that person. In fact, that was me last week, wasn't it, Tony? <laughs> <laughs> so when I got home and watched the sermon, I was, like, reflecting a bit on myself... And I was like, Kesh, what are you talking to me for? <laughs> but it is really easy to wake up in a bad mood and then go and outwardly reflect that on others as you go about your day. Now, we all have bad days, but I guess the question is, do we want to be defined as people who have bad days? Or do we want to be the person that is so happy the church elders accuse him of being on drugs? <laughs> So what's God calling you to do and how he is calling you to serve? Come forward, stand up, make yourself known, listen to God's call. We want you to be that person. Each of you are a person that Jesus knows by name and loves, a child of Christ that he calls, that he has a purpose for. Jesus knows what he wants of you. So I'm here to ask you today, what are you doing about it? Jesus wants us to be part of the church. And make no mistake, the church isn't the building, right? The Bible tells us in 1 Peter, you're a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of the darkness and into the light. There it is again. Think about it. What is God calling you to do? What is he calling you to get rid of or give up on? And what does he want for you? I encourage anyone who's been stirred this morning to come forward, see one of our team leaders. If you're interested in pastoral care, see Dorothy. If you want to do work with children, come and see me. If you want to be part of the worship group, come and see Kesh after the service. Get up and do something. Amen? Amen. Let me pray. Great and glorious God, we thank you for being a God of honesty, a God that tells us all we need to hear. We thank you for the calling you place upon us and the glorious reward you offer when we take up this calling. Lord Jesus, we pray 
that as we head out of this place today, you continue to stir us in your call to service and remind us each and every day, Lord, that we are here to serve only you. We ask that you continue to remind us that our service only begins when we walk out those front doors. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. There is no